Walter Becker has passed on. He was 67 years old. I'm John Bowden from smoothjazznow.com. We already did a report on Walter passing on our sister site, rockhistorymusic.com. I stuck to the facts on that one, and there was something I have to share about Steely Dan, which uh, legitimized me, I think, a little bit as a music guy. Growing up in the 70s, as I'm sure a lot of you are if you're watching this video, there was something cool about Steely Dan. There was something that I didn't understand when I first heard them. Sure, I liked the earlier stuff like Reeling in the Years, Do It Again, uh, but to, to me, they that was album stuff. It wasn't really digging enough to buy the albums because back then in like 72, 73, I wasn't buying albums till about my, maybe 1974. I was 12 in 1972, so I was a 45s kind of guy. But by the time I got into high school and by the time that that Asia came out, that it was hard not to notice that album. Everyone seemed to have it. And I was still buying a lot of bubblegum stuff back then until a good friend of mine basically coaxed me to, to pick up Asia. And my world changed. There was um, a certain air to what Steely Dan was doing and it was hard to pinpoint. If you were a rocker in 1977, listening to Steely Dan, in spite of the fact that they had things like Peg and Deacon Blues on Asia, um, it was catchy stuff, but it was also very sophisticated. There was something different about it. There was more in there. And looking at, of course, all the musicians and all the drummers, uh, you know, Murata, Gad, uh, that were involved in that. Uh, Lee Rittenauer, Larry Carlton on guitar, uh, Don Grolnick on keys. It was amazing the, the heavyweights that were on that album. So it add, added a certain extra layer, I think, to my musical palette growing up in the 70s. And it made me dig a little deeper. Eventually, as many of you know, I got into smooth jazz for about 10 years. I didn't like most of the smooth jazz that was playing, but about 15, 20% of it, 25% of it was fantastic. And the vocal stuff that we played with smooth jazz uh, back in the late 80s and early 90s were things like Steely Dan. When Two Against Nature came out, and, and there was no charting 45s on uh, Two Against Nature and its follow-up, but on Smooth Jazz, it got tons of airplay. And again, there was an air of sophistication to that format, much like I was trying to get when I was 17 years old. I was out of school in 1980 by the time Gaucho came out, but I still loved it. And I remember taking it apart and trying to figure out what the heck they were up to but there was always something more to that band. I like bands that make you dig a little deeper and Steely Dan certainly did that. The boys met way back in the late 60s, Walter Becker and Donald Fagan, and they kind of had a recognition for each other. They knew there was something there. And with his passing this morning, which was an incredible shock, it reminds me that I should never stop digging a little deeper. When I hear people say, oh, there's not a lot of great music out there. There's not." Like all the new music is crap. Well, why not go backwards? Why not put it in reverse and go backwards and make sure, for instance, in this case, you have heard all the Steely Dan albums going back to 1972. They only had nine studio albums. I was mentioning in our other report on rock history music that like the Eagles, who only had seven, they packed a punch though with the few albums that they had out. So we tip our hats to Walter Becker, a huge part of rock and roll history, a great guitarist and a, a quirky guy. May he rest in peace. If you want to see our other report on Walter's passing, just go to the links down below at rockhistorymusic.com where we keep it more so to the facts of his career. Take good care of yourself. This is Smooth Jazz Now.